Hello artists! Welcome to another Creators 3D tutorial. In this video, I will explain about the different types of lighting that exist in the viewer adjustments, the differences between them, and how they can be used in order to achieve a more flattering look for the product in the end result. So let's start! In the first stage, I will explain about the lighting that is in the scene category. Here is the HDRI lighting. This lighting is used as environment lighting. By clicking here, you can select different HDRI images. It is recommended to choose an image with the neutral colors or one that will match the lighting we want and is approximately similar to the lighting that exists in the reference images. Usually, choosing a studio lighting will provide a good result. You can control the lighting intensity and its effect using the exposure of the lighting in the HDRI intensity sliders. In exposure, dragging the slider to the right increases the exposure intensity of the lighting. And here in intensity, dragging the slider to the right, note that in this model, no significant difference in intensity can be seen because the material of which it is composed are very rough, but you will see very big differences in products that have materials with a high level of reflectivity, such as metals and various plastics. Let's look at an example of a model with a metallic material. Here I reset the values of the HDRI lighting. Now I will increase the intensity of the exposure. There are some details that can be seen in the model, but the reflections are still missing. I will now increase the HDRI intensity value. And slowly we can see some reflection details on the model. You can play with the exposure value and the HDRI intensity until you reach a desired result. I recommend not to increase the exposure value above 1, so as not to get an overexposed look. In models where the level of reflectivity is high, you can see how different maps affect the material and the visibility of it. Let's take an image with a few colors. You can see that all the color of the material have changed accordingly. Same thing if I take a picture with shades of blue or more green. Therefore, as I said, it is definitely recommended to choose an HDRI image that matches the overall color scheme according to the reference image. We will now move on to the lighting category. Above, you can see all the types of lighting currently available in the scene. Additional lighting can be added by clicking on Add Light. To edit a specific light, click on the desired light. You can see in the 3D window the position of the lighting in the scene marked with a gizmo. There are several ways in which the lighting position in the scene can be modified. One way is of course by clicking and moving the 3D gizmo in the scene, very similar to moving objects in a 3D software. You can move on the three axis and pressing in the middle allows a free movement. A second way is through this circle here that you can see. This circle represents the position of the lighting in the scene from a top view. Imagine that our model is in the middle of the circle. For example, if I want to place the lighting behind the model, I will drag the icon of the lamp up, meaning backwards. And if I want to place it in front of the model, I will drag the icon down. A scroll up and down allows you to lower and raise the lighting on the y-axis. A third option for defining the location of the lighting is by entering numerical values in each of the axes. Note that the system calculates in meters. We will now move on to other features that exist in almost every lighting. Here you can see, of course, the name of the lighting, and you can also change it right here. For example, I want this main lighting to be called daylight. You can see that the name has changed here as well. This will help you keep on order when you have multiple lighting in your scene. By moving the slider of intensity, of course you can control the lighting intensity. I recommend not to increase the value above 1. Clicking on isolate light can also isolate the specific light and see how only this light affects on the scene. 
This actually hides the effect of the rest of the lighting in the scene. Here you can choose the lighting color. We recommend keeping the lighting color as neutral as possible, close to white, so as not to change the colors of the overall appearance. The color of the product should be as close as possible to the reference using the texture maps and not by lighting. I will now explain the different types of lighting and how they affect the scene and the model. We have here this bag, as you can see, and I deleted all the lighting except the HRI lighting. I am now adding an ambient light. This light is one of two lighting that gives general lighting to the model. We usually add this light after we have placed lights in the scene, but the shadows are too strong and we want to soften them or we want to add a bit of brightness to the scene. The second ambient light lighting is hemisphere. You can experiment with both of this lighting and see how it affects the model and the material in the scene. I will now explain about the other types of lighting that are more focused. The first is the point light. It is basically a sphere that spreads light everywhere. The lighting is very strong and the shadow it casts is very harsh. In this lighting, there is an option to change its range of effect by dragging the slider of distance. When the slider is at zero, it means that the range is infinite. Notice what happens when you start dragging the slider to the right. The lighting is darkened because the distance is too short. As I increase the range, the effect of the lighting will be visible. It is also in meters. In this light, we have also the option of follow camera. Clicking on this feature locks the position of the lighting in relation to the camera. When I will move the camera, you can see that the lighting also rotates along with the camera. Notice what happens when this feature is not on. The lighting stays in place. And when we turn around the model, it looks like the back is dark. This is because there is no lighting existing here. Another light is the directional light. This lighting simulates daylight. The shadow it casts is softer than the previous lighting as we saw. Here too, you can play with the distance and also you can turn the follow camera option. I will now add a spotlight. It can be seen that it emits light according to this line. That is the angle. In the spotlight, you can change the angle and get different effect. Also in this lighting, you can change the range distance and turn on the follow camera option. Last lighting is the rectangular light. You may know it by another name, area light. This is a square lighting. Currently, the lighting is very strong in the scene. Note that the default dimensions are 10 meters by 10 meters. I will reduce the size to something like 20 by 20 centimeters. And I will place the lighting in the scene. Unlike the area light you know in the 3D software, when I move its position behind the model, it automatically flips over. It will always shed light towards the model. Unlike the other lights, here you cannot play with the range, but you can turn on the follow camera option. After learning the different types of lighting, I will explain about the features of the shadow in the viewer. First of all, in order to activate the shadow, we will mark here the square of the shadow plane. There are two situations in which the shadow works. One situation is when we have a spotlight in the scene where the cast shadow option is on. Changing the angle and height gives a different result to the shadow. This is one option. It's a shadow that seems less realistic, so we will usually use the second option, which is the physical shadow. Going down here and clicking on the physical shadow option. This shadow simulates a situation where we have some kind of lighting above the model that casts a shadow. We have three options for changing the appearance of the shadow. One is the shadow intensity or shadow opacity. Two, it's the blurring of the shadow. And three, the shadow height. Dragging the slider to the right allows you to get more details from the model in the shadow. You can play until you reach a desired result. Of course, we should not exaggerate with the blurring of the shadow or with the darkness of the shadow. We want to get a natural result. 
Another option that exists in several types of lighting, including directional, point and spotlight, is the option of casting the shadow on the model itself obtained from the lighting. This is possible by turning on the cast shadow option in each of the lights. Notice what happens when I turn off the cast shadow. The lighting is still there, but the shadow on the model is gone. I will turn it back on. Notice how much it adds to the model and improves the overall appearance. For this feature to work properly, it is not enough to turn on the cast shadow button. We need to perform another action. We need to go to meshes and turn on, on each of the meshes, the cast and receive shadow. By clicking on this three point right here, you can turn off and on the received and cast shadow for all the meshes. After we have made the changes in the meshes, we will save the scene and we can see the shadow on the model. I will now demonstrate the process of creating lighting for a model. I like to start the process when there are no lights at all in the scene. Start from zero. The first thing I do, I am adding HDRI lighting. I am choosing a studio HDRI image. I then move on to the lighting category. For start, I am adding directional light that will be the key lighting. I place it in the scene, but not in the front middle so as not to create a flat look. So I place it slightly to the side to get a shadow. This will give me a slightly more interesting result. It is recommended to make occasional scene saving while working on the lighting. I am now going to turn on the receive and cast shadow for all the meshes. So of course I can turn on one by one or choose some of them, but I am going to just perform the action on all of them. So as mentioned before, we cannot yet see the effect of the shadow because we need to turn on the cast shadow in the lamp. You can see that the shadow has artifacts. It happens because there is not enough resolution for the shadow. So I'm going to increase the resolution of the shadow from 512 to 1K in the shadow size. I can see it still has not solved the problem. I will try to increase it to 2K. If the shadow still does not look smooth, you can try to fix by moving the sliders of the normal bias. Note that it is very delicate sliders. If it freaks out, you can just reset it to the default state that is zero. Here I move the lighting a bit to try to get a nicer shadow. If I see that the shadow still does not look good enough, I will slightly reduce the intensity of the lighting and move on to add more lights. I am adding point light and turn on the cast shadow option. You can see the different attempts of position until I will get the desired result. Here too you can see that there is not enough resolution for the shadow, so it looks pixelated. So I increase the resolution of the shadow size to 1K. I am adding ambient light. The intensity of 1 is too strong. I reduce the intensity to about a half. I am now trying to soften the lighting effect of the point light by using distance. When using distance, you can increase the volume above 1. Notice the result we get, much softer look.
I am now adding another point light from the opposite side. And I also add spotlight. After I finish placing lighting, I will save the scene. And now I move on to editing the shadow. Here I choose that the shadow will be at a low height and the effect will be at the meeting point between the legs and the floor. And save again. For summary, of course this is a process with a lot of experiment. It is recommended to avoid areas in the model that are too dark or too bright. Play with the shadows to achieve an interesting result. I hope this video was helpful for you. Good luck!